on August 27, 2023, AEW went to Wembley, doo doo. 80,000 plus wrestling fans came from all of these countries, doo doo. Then they were bound and determined to make this the biggest spectacle ever, doo doo. Did they succeed with crowd energy alone? Let's talk about it. Yeah, it was a terrible whistle. I'm sorry. I'm John Renton with my review of AEW All-In 2023. Wembley Stadium, 80,000 plus fans. 81,035 was the announced attendance. Who knows how many actual people were there, but let me tell you, that thing looked really goddamn full. So I'm going to take them at their fucking word. They made a shit pot full of money. And please come back, please come back, please come back. The energized crowd was saying, and they're going to, in 363 days. So we've got some time to plan. And also all outs in a week. So yeah, we've got a plan for that too. A lot of shit going on in wrestling and... Well, yeah, there was a lot to talk about from this particular show. So <clears throat> the stadium looked great. Looked goddamn great. Hats off to every single goddamn fan that went there, that enjoyed themselves. I hope you had a great goddamn fucking time. It was an incredible atmosphere. You know, SummerSlam 1992 was an incredible atmosphere. This was goddamn great. It, it just, the crowd energy alone made this show worth watching. Well worth the 50 bucks that U.S. fans would plunk down. So, they did have a pre-show before the Zero Hour, and really the only thing of note was a contract signing between Miro and Hobbs for All Out in, in a week. Uh, Simon Miller of What Culture was one of the guards. I imagine that was a big goddamn throw for him. I like Simon Miller. Uh, he's a big Miro fan. And that was good. That was really cool. Really happy for him. Um, and then Team TNA, as I'm calling them, showed up. Jarrett and his goons, including Karen, who has no business being on uh, this program. Uh, you know, pre-show or otherwise, she should be at home. Seriously, she provides nothing. She provides absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, they do their usual shit. And then Paul White shows up. Anthony Agogo, who I'm glad to see that he's back on programming. Uh, I know he had some um, issues he needed to get fixed, and he's had some stuff going on. I'm just glad that he's. I'm just glad that he's back on the program, even if it was just in this little role. And Grado, I do not get Grado. I will never get Grado. I know a lot of people in the UK like him. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, they basically lay them out, and it was what it was. And I don't know what Kip Sabian's hair, um, you know, was supposed to be. It just, it, it was a bit weird. But, you know what, whatever. Kip seemed happy to be there. I imagine Kip probably wouldn't be on the show. I'll give this much credit to Tony Khan. They had some run-ins, and they had some stuff that I will talk about for good, bad, or indifferent. But at least there was no Battle Royal. I expect that, or a couple of them to be at All Out. But, crowd was up as hell. And it's all about the boom, 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 boom. Adam Cole, Adam Cole, Adam Cole, and MGF, baby. Better than you, baby, against Aussie Open. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship match. And basically, Aussie Open jump starts. Um, the crowd was going to make this big. They were bound and fucking determined. And that was the one thing. A crowd that is really with it, they will will a show <laughs> that might have not been as good with you know, a slightly energized crowd, they will will it to being something memorable. So, um, he did the kangaroo kick, MJF did, holy shit, chance. They end up hitting a double clothesline, one, two, three. I don't really have much to say about it. New Ring of Honor Tag Team Champion. Here's my guesses. <coughs> the Bucks beat him for the ROH Tag Tiles, or this whole thing with the Kingdom keeps going, Bennett and Taven eventually win the Tag Tiles. And then maybe they do the three, uh, the uh, three bird, the free bird rule with Roderick Strong. That would be nice. Um, Mercedes Monet was in the crowd. I don't think she's going to sign with them, but if she makes some appearances, I'd be all for that. Lexi Nair was, um, you know, interviewing Britt. That was certainly a promo that happened. And then Jack Perry arrives in a somewhat stretch, you know, car, not necessarily a limo. And then Hook attacks him in the entrance. So it is Jack Perry and who? There. That's what you're getting. <laughs> FTW Championship. FTW Rules. and Okay. There was a rolling thunder on the roof onto the hood, and then Jack Perry got slammed on the glass. More on that here in a bit. <laughs> uh, Perry is cut up. 
He, uh, the cut seemed like they were in too deep. He was trying to keep all the blood in his back instead of having it pour out. And <clears throat> it was really bad because they couldn't drive that car out with the window smashed because even though the driver could see, he was just able to witness nothing but broken glass. Annie Lennox is going to hate me. So anyway, <laughs> um, Red Rum wins it. Nice knowing you, Jack Perry. So, okay, let me address the rumors right now. I don't, according to PW Insider, and I don't know what actually happened, because other people have reported this like Fightful, <laughs> that Jack Perry wanted to use something with real glass on collision, and Punk said no, and that was recent, last couple weeks or whatever it was. And I don't know what was true, what wasn't. And then there's reports of a scuffle, and I don't know if the scuffle did or didn't fucking happen. Jack Perry... Apparently, you know, said, oh, you know, that's real glass, cry me a river. Maybe he said it, maybe he didn't. And then he tried to mess with Punk, and <laughs> Punk choked him out. Now, if it didn't happen, then okay, there's egg on the face of the various journals. If the, if any of that stuff did happen, then Jack Perry looks like an idiot. Am I, and I'm a Punk fan, but I mean, I admit, a lot of the drama seems to follow. I don't know what actually happened or what didn't, so I'm just going to leave that to the side. I will say if it did happen, that Jack Perry does look like a fool, though. So anyway, um, I like the fact that um, Tony Khan played, or paid for Machine Head by Bush. I was in my teens when that album came out. Good Lord. So, CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk, and Samoa Joe, real world title match. JR and Excalibur and Nigel call it to start. They would switch the announcers out. Methinks that JR probably wanted to be switched out after this, and more on that in a bit. Um, <clears throat> big fight feel. Joe was a clear heel here. Him and Punk know each other very well, and after Punk had recently beat him, but, you know, by fluke over Baleen. Oh my god, oh my god, you know, Joe's bound and determined to get his, get his revenge. <clears throat> um, I did like the Terry Funk bump, you know, the rope tangle that Punk did. That was very nice. That was a very nice tribute to the late, great Terry Funk. And... <clears throat> There was a swing into the announcer's table. Punk got color. Um, the crowd was split. Punk does the whole Cena thing and then does, you know, the Hogan leg drop because he's just having fun with it. Uh, Joe did Hulk up. That was kind of funny. That 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 was kind of funny. And then he did a spinning toe hold. It seemed like Joe might actually get, you know, he got the snap slam before that. It seemed like Joe might get the victory. I think it was pretty obvious Punk was going to win, but they at least did a good job of making Joe look like a killer because he got hit with the Pepsi plunge. And I bet Punk's knees are going to be screaming at him pretty much until probably after All Out. Like, you idiot. We are not that young anymore. Ouch. But that was cool. He broke out that move. So Punk, by the way, poses with a fan that had a trans rights are humans rights sign. Let me just say right now that if anybody has an issue with trans rights being at the forefront and everything, especially the whole protect trans kids thing, children are not getting the gender affirming surgery, all that stuff, none of that is happening. You fucking goofs, you fucking idiots. So if anybody has an issue with trans people simply existing, you are fucking assholes, you do not deserve happiness, pull your heads out of your fucking asses, nothing wrong with trans people, what the fuck did they do to you? If they're bad people because they're bad people, hate them because of that. Don't hate them because they just want to simply exist being who they are. That's it. That's all I got to fucking say. By the way, to the person that held that sign, I salute you. So, sky high pyro shots for the faces, especially Hangman Adam Page. It's Omega, Page, and Ibushi against White Juice. Jay White and Juice Robinson and Takeshita. The guns are at ringside. Don Callis is on commentary. Referee Rick Knox. So I pretty much had all the ingredients uh, for something I would hate. Uh, JR taking the piss out of all this, out of callous and out of all this. And JR wanted to go home. JR wanted to go home. I don't blame him. I don't blame him because I can imagine that with his health issues, and I'm glad that he's cancer free. <laughs> he's doing better, but God, he's got. He, I don't know if he signed, um, you know, he re signed or not, or if All Out's going to be his last show. I have no idea. Now, Big fight feel and everything, even though they kind of rushed some of this stuff. I'm going to surprise you guys. This match actually wasn't that bad. Coming from somebody that is not a big elite fan. <laughs> but they worked this well. 
Ibushi, and I know that Ibushi was had a long time off because of his shoulder. I don't think Ibushi really has it anymore. I don't think he really does. That being said, I mean, there were a few spots. I questioned the Poison Rana. Why? Fall away, slam off the top. That could have ended badly. It didn't, thankfully. Um, everyone kept doing shit. Rick Knox can't enforce the rules because Rick Knox doesn't know what the fucking rules are. Um, why is everything golden, JR said? Because JR just has, has fucking had it. I mean, whatever. People that are into, into it, you're into it. Um, the one thing that surprised me was Takeshita rolled up Omega 1, 2, 3. <laughs> I was a bit surprised by that. I actually expected the Golden Elite to pin Juice. But you know what? If we go with Takeshita and Omega at Grand Slam, I don't think we should do it all out. I think that's too soon. Uh, that it, it certainly was uh, more surprising than I expected. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. And then a super kick's going to knock you out. Yeah, sure, Bucks. Sure. You guys don't even look like you could whip a piece of paper and rip a piece of paper and have a piece of rice paper. Because now their offense looks believable. <laughs> so, FTR and the Bucks. AEW Tag Team Championship match. I don't really know what that was supposed to be, by the way, that song. JR did ask if Freddie Mercury, Freddie Mercury rather, was still alive. So... <clears throat> I did like how um, they had, that FTR had Bray, Brody, and Jay armbands and <laughs> tribute stuff to them. That was very classy. I'm going to surprise you guys again. This wasn't that bad. Now, the Bucks do too much shit and really aren't that great. I appraise some of their stuff in the past. This is one of the better Bucks matches I've seen. Had a few too many kickouts. Still somehow needed more kickouts because it didn't seem to have enough for a Bucks match. Um, pace was mostly good. I, I did get a little bit tired of being kicking out of all the moves. Um, Dax was going off after a hot tag. They were chaining. Wheeler's got a gun. Shout out to Grace on uh, Twitter for that. Because she was there in attendance. Grace, hope you had a great goddamn time. That was great. That was great. God, UK, never change. Um, the double sharpshooter or whatever, and Chris Adams was not involved, oddly enough. And then the powerplex, that got stopped. They were countering the moves well, I will say that, but something just kept something kept this from being one of the best matches of the year. Just my opinion. Maybe it'll eek onto my list, because it was well wrestled and did still only go about 21, 22 minutes. I mean, with entrances, it's probably close to 25 because it was a big old stadium. But we got the mist, <laughs> you know. BTE trigger where they, they hit their little knees. Ow, 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 ow. And then we got, you know, we, we got the the FTR trigger. I did kind of find it funny after a 450 got missed that they hit the BTE trigger. And because it was either they were going to be late or one of the Bucks panicked, they literally pulled cash, you know, up. It was noticeable. Probably should have cut away from that, but nevertheless. Um, nice shatter machine. That was for two. A BTE trigger for two. And then another shatter. They, they kept doing the big moves, and they finally hit a shatter machine instead of the Meltzer driver. The Bucks, you know, were trying for that, but then big shatter machine. One, two, three. That was shocking. I did not expect FTR to actually win. I'm glad they did because they're the best tag team going today. But there we are. <laughs> the Bucks don't shake their hands. And we leave it up for another match. Please no. Please no. Um, then Wild Thing. You make the stadium sing. And you made my enthusiasm go straight into the toilet because of the stadium stampede. Gee, I wonder if you can guess what I thought of this match. So, Mox, Claudio, Yuta, Santana, and Ortiz against the best friend. Taylor, <laughs> Trent the Idiot, Cassidy, Penta, and Eddie. This is one of the worst things that I've seen. And mind you, the show was not that bad up to this point. <clears throat> Wasn't that bad up to this point. So, there were barbed wire boards and chairs and all this crap and all. <laughs> the stadium stampede, and or queef in the arena, whatever the hell you want to call it, they've all been bad. They've all been bad. And it, I don't care if people bleed. I don't care if people use weapons if there's actually a reason to do that if you're just doing it for the sake of doing it then you're no better than 
really a lot of these deathmatch promotions that wrestle in front of like you know a few hundred people and there are people who like deathmatch wrestling there are even some of them that are allowed out of their house without adult supervision but nevertheless <sighs> this is everything that's wrong with wrestling that's what i noted i don't want to see any of these guys i like some of these guys i don't want to see any of them anymore because <laughs> this was terrible there was <laughs> multiple camera shots because people were wrestling all over the goddamn thing. We got Mox bleeding. We got the sticks in the head. Proving that Moxley's a fucking idiot. We got <laughs> barbed wire. We got all this shit. I mean, I, and then we got a fork. We got Orange Cassidy being forked. Orange Cassidy, that's a fucking joke. This goddamn abortion of a gimmick. And he is. I'm not saying the person. But that gimmick is terrible. That is one of the worst goddamn things that AEW has put on their television. And I thought that from the moment that I saw him at Double or Nothing 2019. I'm like, I hate this guy, and he is never going to earn my respect. And he doesn't deserve the respect of wrestling fans. I'm sorry. If you like him, that's great. To me, he is bad for wrestling. Because it just makes it look like, you know, a joke could win this. So anyway, we got... Uh, Penta, by the way, shows up. Dark Penta shows up at one point because he just disappeared to change and hit people with a hammer. Then the ladder broke. We we got all this other madness and all this other bullshit. Everybody's just going all over the goddamn place. You've got to give the people what they want. The fuck you do? Legos, a suplex through a table. <laughs> A uh, glue and broken glass. A barbed wire, barbed wire chair. Because Eddie, who was doing well in the G1, is in this horse shit. And an orange glass punk for three on, or punch for three. He was a punk. Not a good punk, but <coughs> Claudio. Claudio, the Ring of Honor world champion. Well, that title's fucking toast now. There you are. Stadium Stampede was fucking rotten. Speaking of rotten, <coughs> the Night Comedy Clan, and yeah, that's all I gotta say about them. That string of inbred fucks. We are the champions. Tony, uh, coming out. My God, Tony looked great. Tony Storm. <coughs> Britt and Cheetah got entrances, which is probably a good thing, by the way. Um... And otherwise, they're just in the ring already. So, okay, Sheeta defending her recently won AEW Women's Championship against Britt, Tony, and Soraya. I knew what was going to happen. I knew Soraya was going to win the goddamn thing. Now, she's upset at Tony because I'm supposed to win this. The outcasts are suddenly fracturing. You know, that trio. This should have never fucking happened. Here's the thing. It was really, it, it was just not good. The crowd was exhausted. The women were trying, but this is also, I think... Besides the FTW title, I think, I think maybe besides the pre-show matches, this was the shortest match by far. Um, so at one point, Soraya's mom is there in the front row, and then she's holding Britt, and then Tony clocks her in the face. Oh, geez, mother and daughter getting it in the face on camera. I feel bad about saying that about Soraya, Soraya, Defender of Abuserverse, but she continues to defend bad guys and date bad guys so as far as i'm fucking concerned she deserves every bad thing that happens to her she deserves every fucking bad thing I had sympathy for her for a while i was a big fan <clears throat> now she wants to defend you know the rr guy that he is mr radke guy that doesn't even look like he could you know bust through a goddamn wall if you know it was already hollowed out couldn't even walk through a goddamn balsa wood wall. Couldn't even do anything. Couldn't, you know, take some butter and whip it up or whatever. Because he's so goddamn frail and transphobic and homophobic and a piece of shit. And anybody that defends him, you got a fucking problem. So, Ruby. <clears throat> Ruby shows up. Yeah, the crowd didn't give a fuck about this. I clearly didn't either. Tony ends up clocking Ruby. <clears throat> the outcasts explode. More shit happens. Soraya paints Tony in the face and then gets some DDT variation, what the hell it is, one, two, three. I don't care if she holds it to all out and loses it. I don't care if she holds it to Grand Slam and loses it. 
The women's title is basically dead. The women's title has not really meant anything for a while. Not to say that the women haven't tried hard. So that's just proof. Let's just put it on somebody. Yes, it's because it's her home country. Great, good. If she didn't have a neck of sand, really, really, really runny sand that had no strength at all, and actually was somebody you could uh, prop up as a good spokesperson for the company, maybe I'd care. I don't. So, um, Swerve's entrance was certainly a choice. I don't know how much thought they put into that, but more would have helped. Darby, he got Seek and Destroy. Well, Darby and Sting got Seek and Destroy by Metallica. That wasn't cheap. That wasn't cheap. <laughs> Darby and Sting against Swerve and Christian Cage. It was going to be A.R. Fox, and then they changed that. Coffin match. We get the... I'm going to say right now that while I appreciate Darby's willingness to basically not walk by the age of 35, he's willing to just say, hey, you know, I'll teach Nick Wayne stuff, I'll do all this, and let's just, uh, I'll <clears throat> throw my body with reckless abandon. Sting's willing to do shit, too, and Swerve, I like Swerve. Christian Cage really should not be in matches like this because he ain't got much left near a Sting. Um, <coughs> thumbtack jackets. Why? Duct tape. All this bullshit and everything. This was not good. This was terrible. Um, Nick Wayne shows up after Luchasaurus shows up. And then after a couple shots, Nick Wayne gets carried away. Good, good use of people there doing run-ins. Um... <coughs> The crowd did come alive. They were up for it. Sting didn't get crippled. That's a good thing at 64 years old. Coffin dropped to the coffin. Sting was no-selling a chair shop. It sold a low blow with a bat. And then Sting's bat, he sticks his bat out, his big old bat, and that saves him from being locked in the coffin. And then... Um, <laughs> 450 to the coffin... Swerve is taking care of Sting properly because Swerve is a professional. And then they drop, uh, Coffin drop and Swerve gets locked in and they win. And that was, that was really bad. Really, really bad. And this is after Stadium Stampede. If this was the only match that had all that craziness, I probably still wouldn't have liked it, but we literally just had Legos and Barb, whatever. The show picked up after... Jericho's terrible, terrible rendition of Judas, because Jericho can't sing or wrestle now at this point. Jericho versus Osprey. It had a big fight feel, and I'm going to say this much. I've had my issues with Osprey, and I stand by that, but as far as in the ring, he deserved Jericho's money as well for carrying the fuck out of Jericho, who has no business being in the ring anymore. He tried for some stuff that, there were at least 10 spots that he should not have done. And... Callus was there. Great, more Callus. It's just what we fucking need. We don't need that influence. Two code breakers for two, and <clears throat> we got two storm breakers for three. I don't really have much to say about this. I like the fact that Osprey won because at least it made sense after coming up short in the G1, being the US slash UK champion. It makes sense why he would win this, but if they go to the Tokyo Dome for this, that ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work at all. Uh, Jericho, Jericho losing was the right call. I'm all for Osprey, but Osprey deserved a fucking bonus and then a bonus on top of the bonus for A, not getting crippled, and B, making sure Jericho didn't cripple himself trying to hang with the young kids. Jericho blows off Sammy. Oh no, they're having tension. Nigel then uh, um, announces the attendance 81,035. House of Black entrance. I believe it was Buddy. That had a lantern. That was a nice little tribute to Bray Wyatt. Very sad. And then House of Black took on the acclaimed and badass Billy Gunn for the trio's championship. Julia got scissored. I mean, it was on the screen, just saying that right there. <laughs> she looked great. The crowd was into this. It was fine. Mercedes was watching on, sudden cut to Mercedes for no reason. Hey, she's here. It was all right. I, I didn't hate the match, but it's just as a semi-main after all this other stuff and after watching Osprey carry Jericho like that, we got new champs. Okay. I didn't expect that, but it was what it was. Show respect. 
And Billy, I guess, is going for one more run. Maybe he's just going to go to full gear. Maybe he's just going to go a Dynamite Grand Slam. I don't know. That was fine. That was fine for what it was. MJF makes his entrance after <coughs> Adam Cole makes his entrance. Uh, a throne being pushed. The steps go right into one of the girls who was kneeling. I hope she's all right because that looked like it could have been kind of bad. MJF's probably saying, idiot, you ran into somebody. And it's called MJF, AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Who would turn heel? Seemed like Cole was acting more heelish. Even though MJF was, Cole was a lot more heelish in this. Uh, the crowd was up for it. It was like, oh, Cole was <coughs> reverting more because he has to win, he has to win, he has to win. I'm better than you, Max. I'm better than you, Max. And we got a slow start to it. Cole taking this more seriously. And we got Heat Seeker by Cole. He was pulling out a lot of MJF's moves. And then a Brain Buster on the steps. That was a little bit much. They did a little bit too much in this. And even though it was a big fight feel, the floor bumps and the stuff near the floor, I, I think that they need to cool it on that stuff. I didn't hate this match, by the way. It told a good story. But it could have been great. So, MJF, <coughs> naturally the best wrestler going today. Thunder Rose is out of the picture, so MJF's the best wrestler going today. Um, a Destroyer, and then MJF hits a kick. Popping up from that, I didn't really care for that. <laughs> Whatever. <coughs> and then they end up hitting a double clothesline. You know, they end up doing the head-head, you know, that the double the clothesline at the same time. And they both got a hand on each other. One, two, three. Double pin. So, okay, that was a bit much. That was a bit much. Not really, not sure how I feel about that. Grab was chanting bullshit. Cole said max, five more minutes. MJF said no. We need to, five minutes ain't enough. We, we're going to have, we're going to have a winner in fucking Wembley. It restarts. Then we get a ref bump. <laughs> Then a chair toss, they kind of do the Eddie thing, and MJF puts it around his neck, and they're doing this, and the referee's trying to eventually come back up. And then we got a straight jacket German on the apron. We got a poison, or no, Panama Sunrise on the floor. Why? That's where it really started to lose me. And then a Panama to the ref. And that's really where I just threw my hands up and just said, okay, this was ridiculous. The Blyce is down. The Blyce is down. And Roddy comes out. Because why not? I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense why Roddy came out. Just the problem is they took a while to get there. So, a low blow to MJF. Cole doesn't... He hits a Panama. He hits the boom kick. But he's wondering what the hell Roddy did. But the referee gets up and does a very slow two count. And then Cole's upset. His Roddy hands on the title, not that way. And then we get an inside cradle, one, two, three, after Roddy leaves. <sighs> the right result, I'm happy MJF won. I just, I don't know. The, this, this, the crowd was willing this show to be great, so it was what it was. MJF said to Cole, I got lucky. <laughs> And then Cole shoves him away and says, oh, I see. It was You were just pretending to be my friend to get a title shot and everything. You don't care about the tag titles. And he stands with his back to him. Go ahead, do it. Go ahead, do it. Roderick Strong's telling him to do it. He doesn't. They hug. And they're returning next August. I appreciate what they did. And they had some good stuff to it. My problem is, and I get why the show went long. Wembley Stadium, big old show, but... There were peaks, and this was a better pay-per-view offering than usual because of the atmosphere, but also at the same time, there was shit on this show. I just fucking hate it. So what was your match of the night? What was your least favorite match of the night? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.